Hi, Moss here with Fio's FH5 IEMs. Now, I've already unboxed these, if you hadn't already noticed. You can check out the unboxing and the link that's going to appear in the corner here. These IEMs are Fio's well, flagship, and they're relatively inexpensive for, for a flagship pair of IEMs, and they've also got a lot in them, a, about multiple balanced armatures and a dynamic driver, and you can see they're kind of fairly chunky as well. Now, they come with a number of tips for tuning, which I put separated out of some sets into this bowl, including a safety pin, which will come in handy for something in a minute I'm going to show you. And the default tips are these, uh, well, they put on a medium set of what they call balanced. I guess balanced sound is what they're referring to. But they also have some tips here for uh, vocals, which are kind of, they have these ribs inside that make them remind me a lot of kind of t final type E tips, ribbed for your pleasure in there, as you can see. Ha, ha, ha. And these bass tips, which just seem to have a, a kind of different size shaped or slightly similar kind of core with, interestingly, considering bass tends to involve having a, a smaller nozzle when dynamic drivers are involved, seem to have a slightly larger one. They also come with some foam tips, as we already saw. But the interesting thing about these foam tips is they actually look a bit short. Now, if I get a foam tip from something like, I think these were from something like Andromeda's or something else like that, you can see they're longer. So the, the FIO tips are shorter, and that's where it comes down to the shape of these IMs, which is quite interesting. The nozzles, well, the whole thing, they're quite chunky, as you can see. And if I pull one of these tips off, the nozzle doesn't stick out quite so far. I mean, they're kind of similar maybe a little bit to, if I can get the, if I've got left or right correct, I've got the Andromeda's here too. Let's pull off an Andromeda tip. And you can see there, I mean, this is five balance armatures, this is dynamic driver as well. They're really chunky IEMs. You can see there, and maybe not, actually not that far off in size looking, it's just a bit more curvaceous. So the problem I have is getting a good seal with these. I think in some areas they stick out maybe even a bit more than the Andromeda's do. If I can sit them side by side, and apologies if I can't do, do a good job of this. It's hard when cables are pulling against everything. So they are had a bit of trouble getting a seal on these, and this becomes important because of the dynamic driver. If you don't get seal on a dynamic driver, um, you lose base. As anyone who, the first, like when I first tried the RHA IEMs, and uh, I didn't get any base on what's going on. Turned out I didn't have a good seal, needed a size larger of tip. And because this is also quite a chunky nozzle, just like some of the others, it, um, it's hard to push tips on them. So as another comparison, the chunkiest IEMs I have here are these massive Layla's. And this is just detached from everything at the moment, but you can see this is chunky, 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 chunky. But look, notice something interesting is that the nozzle sticks out more if we line up the nozzles. They stick out far more on the Layla's than they do on the Fio, and this is a critical thing where you can see if I line up where the where the kind of the bulge tip of the bulge is, they have that little bit extra which can stick out and you can get a bit of fit with. So I hope I can line up in the camera, okay? And so that's kind of been the only downside with fit, and it's become a problem with some of the tips. Like if I grab a set of base tips, which are the I think these were the hardest to put on. I can't remember. I've been rotating things around, and they've all been pretty hard to put on. If I don't, trying to push these on, let's see if my camera will focus. They get very difficult to push all the way. Oh, that went on cleanly that time. Okay, that pair went on. That one went on. I may have been the vocal tips, but I had a great deal of trouble getting these to go on cleanly all the way. Ah, oh, this was the one. It was the vocal tips I was thinking. Now, I thought I pushed that on all the way, but if I turn it round, uh, no, I haven't. And can I? No, I can't actually get it to go on. Or can I? Oh, I did, finally. They're really, really hard to put on. And that makes it kind of troublesome if you're rotating tips a lot. If you just do it once, it's not a big deal. But that's kind of the only irritation I've had. The good thing is, of course, the cable. And I'm going to talk about that a bit too. So comes with this nice tie, which is, this kind of tie has become popular, obviously. The cable is kind of, well, you can see what it is there. Now, the interesting thing is, look, it's a double cable going from the plug all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way, up to the splitter and through the splitter. And you're thinking, why is this important? 
What's the big deal? And there's your choker. We see a lot of IEMs, they have a single cable going up to the splitter, and then inside they have a join. And then the join goes to two separate cables, so it's actually three cables, not, not one not uh, a single cable to split which is just held together and and like this one and split but it's actually multiple cables joined and i've had a very 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 expensive pair of iems or, or rather a cable from a manufacturer where the, uh, the the connection inside the splitter broke and i've been someone else was from an iem company said look out for this 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 these um join cables in the splitter and this obviously does not have join cables in the splitter it has a single cap cables going all the way through and that's great and then we've got of course down to the end here and you've got your memory your memory well no memory wire at all it's just shaped plastic so kind of like the Dieter IMs where you just I guess you can if you really want you could just heat this up with a hair dryer and, and, and reshape it I haven't tried that it's been fine and you use all MMCX connectors but the cable is good and it's not it's not noisy at all when you wear it it doesn't transmit any noise my lovely sounding but unfortunately very lovely sounding cable on these uh, the reference 8 cable from campfire is it sounds great but it's very quite noisy when you rub rub stuff rubs against it so that's as far as ergon ergonomics go these are really good in terms of the cable but not so good in terms of sticking something in your ear but they do have a good a good firm MMCX connector on here so in that regard they do really really well and the cable is is good and I'll say you don't need to replace this cable with anything aftermarket I'll get that out of the way now one other thing about the sound is a tip off someone gave me in the unboxing video now you see something here there's a little protective grill over the nozzles someone gave me a tip that you should pull this off and this is why we have our funky safety pin which was a little funky safety pin which was sitting over here waiting for use. You just need something like a safety pin. It's held in by a little bit of glue but not too much. What you do, you may need some tweezers as well, all you need to do, you're not sticking anything in there, you just gently just gently pry this out with a safety pin and it's supposed to improve the sound quality. This has already been taken out obviously and you just pop that out. So it's actually very good. I'm just going to quick, quickly leave those in there for the sake of video and then I'll talk about how the sound is with these in and out later. But that's the kind of that's the basic overview of the FH5 and you're all very very keen obviously to know how they sound. With the stock tips the initial sound was generally you know is kind of what I call meat impressive when you go to a meet and you hear a pair of headphones or IMs and they initially sound impressive. So they had it what I would roughly call it I'd say I'd call a U-shaped sound signature and I'm not sure what everyone calls a U-shaped sound signature but there was a strong bass, but not kind of thick and overwhelming and through the through the mids, and then it goes. Then there's a kind of peaky treble, but the, and the, the mid range, you know, back a bit, but not too much. At least initially with these um, these main tips, which are they describe as the balanced ear tips. So, you know, I guess they wanted to have a you know the standard tips have a good overall balance, and that kind of balance, you know, means it fills out the bass nicely with uh, you know a lot, of, especially acoustic music, and there's enough air in the treble that you can uh, you know. It sounds spacious generally overall, you know, the, the, the singer and the instrument's a little bit further back. So as, you know, initial listening, they were kind of really enjoyable. The quality of all that, the dynamic driver, of course, provides a really, really punchy bass, and that's probably one of the most fantastic things about those. And in tip rolling, that's the, probably the main thing that changed. Uh, then, of course, the, you know, the mid-range. The mid-range was really nice, and I really enjoyed listening to vocals through these. And maybe the treble... It wasn't the most excellent treble out there, but it was kind of clean and clear enough that it made kind of listening enjoyable without being fatiguing. Although, you know, with that kind of sound signature, if you had something like really compressed music where, uh, you know, the there's a little bit of uh, maybe the music because of the compression was a little bit harsh in the treble, then because of the slightly bright treble, then that could be a little bit fatiguing with, with these stock tips. Now, of course, you can change the tips. Some of the other tips that came up, you have the vocal tips are the first ones that I have here and the vocal tips were they kind of pushed the bass down a little bit and bring the vocals a lot more forward and so then they'd be you know if you really like vocals in your face these are really good there's still a fair still doesn't you know doesn't reduce the bass excessively still gives a fairly balanced sound signature but then it's kind of pushing it more towards your kind of general neutral so that was a bit too far forward 
you know, for maybe for some preferences. But the next one, of course, was the base tips. Um, and the base tips have, you know, this, this very solid uh, core in there. These tips were, you know, they didn't make a dramatic change to the base, but they kind of filled up the mid-base a little bit more. So they, they brought up the base a little bit, but not as much as, say, a base boost thing on, the, say, the Fioza Q5. I don't know how many people rotate tips around a lot. I mean, I don't. Um, so if you, uh, you know, if you do want to kind of push the vocals more forward, you can. And I'll maybe lift the bass up a little bit, but not too much. That's what those do. But, you know, I like the stock, you know, balanced sound anyhow. Now, the other tips I tried were, you know, my usual aftermarket options, which if you haven't seen my videos, won't be obvious. If you have, you'll probably know. The spin fits. And this is an original pair of spin fits from way back. Um, spin fits, of course, allow the, uh, are for more comfort because the top of, there's a little bit of a neck in there which allows more flexibility in the uh, tip and allows it to rotate around in your ear and be more comfortable. These didn't dramatically change the sound signature. I mean, you can see kind of in the nozzle size is kind of similar, so it's not going to really affect much. Um, those, these were a nice option, so they generally kept the sound signature of the uh, FH5 kind of nicely there. Now, the next tips I tried were the good old JVC spiral dots. Now, spiral dots are, you know, they're an interesting tip. If I just come in, come in close here, you can just see inside there these uh, little dots inside the nozzle. And these kind of stabilize the air going out. I mean, I must be a similar kind of effect as you get with um, the indents on golf balls for stabilizing air. Now, the trouble with these is these are very wide nozzle. So if I look at this stock tip versus these, you can actually see that the nozzle is much, 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 much wider. So if I put these on, You'll see that I. Uh, you'll see that the. Um, you can actually see you know all the all the, you see everything very clearly. Now with dynamic drivers, this can knock down the bass a lot, and given that it's a mixed balanced armature dynamic driver pair of IEMs, it did have some reduction on the bass. It did even things up some more. But the main effect of these is they can really clean up the, you know, the treble and mid, so you get more clarity. And so overall, I felt you got more clarity. And if that was kind of from partly from reducing the bass as well, uh, maybe it kind of just gave it a more even sound signature, but still a lot of the treble came through. And this was a really nice option for acoustic music. And, you know, again, it can be hit or miss whether these work on a pair of IEMs or not. But they did work really well with the um, FH5, I reckoned. So the only thing is you don't get quite as much thumping bass. Actually, kind of the most even sounding were these the foam tips that came with them. Actually, they are kind of fairly even sounding with the foam tips on. So they still provide they provide actually quite a wide nozzle compared to stock. So, but closer to what the um, spiral dots do. So they actually, they were quite a fairly even sounding as a result, and still get a good seal. Be interesting to try some other tips on. Like I remember Hi-Fi Man had a triflange, and I can't find where I put my triflange tips. So that would have been really good too. But oh well. So overall, though. Um, they, compared to other IEMs, I mean, I tried with the higher end stuff, you know, Andromeda's and what have you, they're not as clear sounding and not as clean and clear sounding in the treble. I mean, it's interesting to say, I've been listening to a lot of music in my car. I listen to Radio Paradise. I find music I like. I rate it, you know, they have a 1 to 10 rating system. I rate stuff, you know, 8 is kind of excellent. And so I was listening to something like Ben Howard. Um, and listening to Ben Howard, you know, I get listen in the car. I think this is a really nice song. And the song in particular actually was I Forget Where We Were. And, uh, you know, I get home, put it on my, find it on title, you know, put it on, and it kind of, oh, I can hear all the compression and stuff, and, ah, oh, what a disappointment. But actually with the FH5, they were, you know, it was a nice track to listen with because, you know, I couldn't hear all the, the, the fine, you know, I couldn't hear all the fine detail and fine de absolute fine detail and hear all the compression clearly. It was a nice, and with that nice, that thumping, nice thumping bass, but not overwhelming bass, these made for, you know, a really nice listen for that kind of music. So they're kind of more modern, uh, well sung and, and popular tunes that kind of stuff is what you know I like with these IEMs and for kind of general listening if I was generally listening with IEMs that would be the kind of signature I like you know with the entertaining sounding but not too kind of uh, you know thumpy so other things like uh, what was really nice with the bass and having the dynamic driver is there is good at songs like uh, Dead Can Dance Spirit Chaser that with you know the, the the rumbling bass and that kind of thing that was really fantastic with these things like Massive Attacks Angel which is on my good old number eighty two playlist which I've talked about before you know that kind of thing or Sophie Tucker you know stuff where you want kind of a bit of thump in there but it's also good with things like you know Neil Young's Harvest you know where you want to hear his vocals but you know the backing you know drums and that hey really good percussion and uh, you know really get some enjoyment out of it it really worked well with those those kind of tracks. And of course, again, the only problem was, you know, some tracks are really compressed and the treble can be a little bit unpleasant. 
And you know, these don't deliver the most perfect treble, although generally they were so clean sounding I could I could listen with them and enjoy enjoy them generally. So, you know, considering they're only 300 bucks, um, they're a really nice pair of IEMs. And, uh, you know, kind of, I'd say, I'd say, I'd put all my, if I had a recommended list or something like that, I'd probably say they're, they're recommended. And I can actually envisage, envisage myself listening with these in the future. I mean, I'm going to pick the kind of IEMs I pick up, and, you know, it's the main criteria for me. Would I pick them up and listen with them? And the answer is yes. And they're well made. You know, they have this nice cable. And in case you're wondering, I did briefly try aftermarket cables, you know, I have, you know, ALO and other cables sitting around here and, you know, no benefit to putting better cables on something at this kind of range at all whatsoever. I mean, the cable's nice, solid, looks reasonably pretty. Um, you know, I mean, there are thinner cables you might find out there that might be the only reason or you might want a different connector or you might not want memory wire, although considering the shallow insertion, you probably do want to keep the memory wire so it all sits in there and then I think they'll very easily fall out without memory wire, at least in my years they did. So, you know, as I think it's a really excellent effort from FIO. And apart from the, you know, the some minor ergonomic considerations and, you know, and unless you don't particularly like the design, I think the design looks pretty funky. Um, then, you know, they I reckon they're a pretty good pair of IEMs and a really excellent effort from from FIO to come out with these. And they pair up really nicely with saying things like the Q5, which I've decorated with the uh, with the funky wood grain here. Another thing they paired up with interesting was the Shandling MO, which I'll you'll do a review of soon. Um, I think the, the the MO it doesn't have as much power output, you know, as I have the um, as some of the modules I have on their Q5. It um, you know just like putting like some of the uh, lower powered modules on the Fio DAPS and the uh, Q5, it kind of reduces the dynamics a bit and kind of softens up the bass. Uh, so it doesn't seem as you know thump the bass doesn't seem quite as thumping. Say with a good old Dead Can Dance, which I was just listening to, as it does out of the higher end stuff, Q5, Mojo, what have you. And, you know, but the, I mean, it was a, actually turned out to be a better combination than I expected with that. So that's one I'm going to talk about in the future. So that's the Fio Q5, and I hope that gave you a good overview of the sound. Again, as always, if your questions, comments, and criticisms are, are most welcome in the, in the comments section below. Anything I've missed, I can always cover in another video. Uh, do consider, of course, hitting the good old subscribe button if you'd like to see more, be notified. Um, also, uh, these uh, videos are supported by patrons. The equivalent of buying me a coffee once in a while, they actually get to see the videos in advance. They get to see the rough cuts and my impressions, ask me questions directly and get quick answers, help with buying gear, um, drawers, uh, anything that uh, I, is sitting around that doesn't get any use um, that was given to me by manufacturers, which is more than usually a year or two old. And the, you know, I can, the, the manufacturer doesn't want it back, I give away to uh, my patrons as well. So please do consider all those things. and. Uh, if you do end up thinking of buying a pair of these and you're in the US and, and on Amazon, do buy it from the link below in the description as that will send a, uh, a gift card my way of you know a couple of bucks and that goes towards build, buying, getting better camera gear actually and better microphones and what have you for making better videos. So thanks once again for watching and I'll see you online.